Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to St Mary and All Saints Church here in Great Budworth for this short service for the Sunday next before Lent. A welcome also to members from St Mark's Church in Antrobus who may be watching, and to anyone else who is watching this service. You're all very welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And so in a moment of silence, as we come before God in this service, let us call to mind our sins. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we collect the special prayer for this Sunday, next before Lent. Pray, Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross. Give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to listen to the beautiful hymn, Christ Whose Glory Fills the Sky.
first reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel is written in the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, beginning at the second verse. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
a short reflection on this Sunday. To begin with, happy Valentine's Day, and also happy Saints Cyril and Methodius Day, which doesn't quite roll off the tongue as easily as St. Valentine. We know little about the actual Valentine, or Valentines, as there were two of them, apparently, who was martyred in Rome on this day in around 269 AD, whereas we know a lot more about Cyril and Methodius and their work as missionaries to the Slavic peoples of Eastern Europe in the ninth century. Their work was in fact so important that along with Saint Benedict, the father of Western monasticism, they were nominated by Pope John Paul II as joint patrons of Europe, and they are venerated in both the Eastern and Western Christian churches. Notwithstanding the lack of any real connection between St. Valentine and courting couples, sorry, which may rather have its origins in the pairing of birds or the ancient Roman festival of Lupercalia, both of which took place in the middle of February. And in respect of the latter, Professor Mary Beard will tell you all you need to know about that. Nevertheless, the link between Valentine, Cyril and Methodius and us in the 21st century is very strong and is very definitely one of love. Love of God, that is, and of course, love of our neighbour. And in their different ways, these three saints of the church attested to that love in their lives and in their deaths. In Valentine's case, this was, of course, that of a martyr's death. Cyril and Methodius, on the other hand, worked tirelessly all their lives, often in circumstances of great difficulty and danger, to share their love of God in Christ with others. They learnt the language of the peoples they worked amongst, laid the foundations, in Cyril's case, for what was later to become the Cyrillic alphabet, and translated some of the scriptures and the liturgy into Slavonic. The stories of pioneering missionaries like Cyril and Methodius are often unknown, or at best very little known. And I think they stand as wonderful examples for us in the 21st century, as we continue to reflect on how we proclaim the gospel afresh in every generation, a charge laid on every ordinary in the church, but also a task for every Christian in their own life and situation. We do not, at least in the West, share the same dangers and difficulties that many did and still do in parts of our world. But, like our forebears in faith, we too need to constantly learn about and come alongside the people of our own age and time. And in doing this we need to find and use the gifts, talents and expertise and opportunities that are available to us, just as Cyril and Methodius did in Eastern Europe in the ninth century. For us today, as has been so widely shown during the course of this last year and the COVID-19 pandemic, this involves both actual and virtual contact and communication with people, both near and far, even if for some of us at least, this has involved a very steep learning curve. Like Cyril and Methodius, though, we should seek out and embrace all means of conveying God's love and care for all people. Unlike those first three disciples at the Transfiguration, Peter, James and John, we don't have to wait to tell people about the Messiah. And what's more, we have some of the most incredible technology in the world to help us to do this. 
And so as we approach this coming season of Lent, may God's blessing be upon all of us. The season of Lent, a time, of course, of study, prayer and reflection, as well as witness and worship. And now, just before our prayers, for something completely different. A lovely odd ode to St. Valentine, by very kind permission of the author, Father David Sutton of Eccles in Manchester. St. Valentine is dubious, or so the scholars say. As far as lectionaries go, he's had his final day. He shines no longer glorious, though not disgraced, he's been replaced by Cyril and Methodius. Thank you, Father David. Amen. So now let us pray. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Father. For the one holy, catholic and apostolic church throughout the world and for the mission of that church in all our societies, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our world remembering especially those parts of our world where there is still continuing violence, discrimination and oppression. We pray especially for the peoples of Myanmar. We pray that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among peoples and nations. And we pray for all those who seek to bring peace to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. And we remember especially those known to ourselves, who suffer whether at home, in hospital, in nursing or care homes, in body, mind and spirit. And we remember especially, of course, those who are suffering from coronavirus and all those who care for them. We pray too for refugees, prisoners and all in danger that they may be relieved and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whom we in some way have injured or offended. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, in communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, and we remember especially those who have died recently, praying for the repose of the soul of John Webster, and praying for all members of his family. That they may be strengthened and comforted in their grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence, with prayer, fasting, and generosity, accept our coming Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those 
who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Just a few notices before the final blessing. Uh, please keep a lookout online for the services. Uh, Reverend Dr. Jenny McKay will be leading next week's service and there will be something on Ash Wednesday um, online as well. And of course uh, different pack packs have been sent around to people within the parish um, containing ashes, uh, palms uh, and so on. So please do keep a lookout for that and also for the Sunday sheet uh, which Margaret uh, sends out to many, many people. And if you aren't receiving that and would like to, then please get in touch with one of us at the ministry team. And thank you to everyone who are helping with this service, uh, the recording of it and the putting together of it. Thank you.
Now may Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.